President of the General Assembly of the United Nations, Heads of State and Government, Secretary General of the United Nations, Heads of Delegations. The convening of the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly affords me the opportunity to share with the member states of our organization the vision and the major concerns of my country, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, about the current challenges facing us in the world. Having said that, I wish to preface my remarks by congratulating His Excellency Mr. Dennis Francis upon his election to uh, election as president of our Aug August Assembly and I assure all the members of his bureau of the support of my country as they go about their noble mission, the mission conferred upon them by our institution. I also wish to thank the outgoing president, Mr. Chaba Kuroshi, for his far-sighted leadership and his devotion, which contributed to moving forward our discussions and finding concerted solutions. I also wish to extend my gratitude to Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, for his active and ongoing commitment to peace and international security. President. As our session unfolds here in New York, the people of Morocco have not yet finished mourning their victims. Their wounds have not yet healed following, following the powerful earthquakes which took place in the night of Friday the 8th to Saturday the 9th of September. That earthquake caused the death of 3,000 Moroccans it wounded 5,000, destroying several cities and areas of the kingdom. Furthermore, Libyans have not yet recovered from the trauma of the flooding which claimed the lives of over 20,000 people and, and caused major damage on Sunday, the 10th of the same month. The people of the DRC welcome the mobilization of the international community to provide assistance to the kindred peoples of the Kingdom of Morocco and of Libya. We express our full compassion and solidarity and wish all the wounded a speedy recovery, all the wounded from these two natural disasters. President, beyond deploring these natural disasters, the current present of the the current session of the General Assembly falls at an exceptional period of our history where the world faces serious situations that threaten the very existence of human beings. There's the war in Ukraine, which has caused a food crisis marked by skyrocketing prices and shortages of basic goods. Added on to that comes the exacerbation of the effects of climate change and armed conflicts with, which have continued to erupt in various places. These crises are mutually reinforcing and they pose a challenge to the multilateral system and to international cooperation. And yet the maintenance of international peace and security guaranteeing justice and human rights, prioritizing social progress and establishing the best living conditions are what everyone in the world wants and has always wanted. These goals need to remain at the center of our collective action following a truly multilateral and inclusive approach. We are called upon to work together with an eye to responding to these challenges which are existential in scope. For this fundamental re reason, I hail the relevance of this year's topic of our session, which is entitled Rebuilding Trust and reigniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 agenda and its sustainable development goals towards peace, prosperity, progress, 
and sustainability for all. This topic places the values of solidarity and of trust at the forefront of the factors for recovery and for accelerating the solutions to closely intertwined global challenges in order to move forward peace, security, and sustainable development. These values take on their full meaning in the context of the crisis that we are undergoing today. In this regard, it is vital to recall that at the halfway point towards achievement of the SDGs in 2023, given the climate disasters, the recurrent conflicts, the economic recession, and the persistent after effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, inequality and poverty have worsened. Hunger and malnutrition are on the rise. Humanitarian needs and the displacement of populations have reached record heights. Climate and environmental disasters have plunged the world into a systemic existential risk, which is very serious. In order to tackle these scourges, which pose a genuine threat to international peace and security, and which also constitute a major obstacle to the prosperity and progress of nations, it is clear that pulling our energy and taking a multilateral approach with mutual trust and solidarity Iri kubera Washington DC muri Leta Zunze za Amerika na Mayaroni iri kubera Twitter report na York muri Amerika Perezida wa Amerika Joe Biden mu jambo ryo kufungura inama ku mugaragaro yasabye ibihugu byose bya uko bazakwamagana igihugu cy'Uburusiya mu mugambi wabo okuvogera igihugu cy'u Ukraine asaba buri wese buri wese uri buri bufatiza mu muri yo nama ngombako Ukraine leaving behind them the memory of what they haven't achieved this despite the fact that they embodied all of the hopes of Virtually, the Hanyuma umugu wa Bayern Munich ukaza guhura na Manchester United mu Bwongereza mu masaha ya saa 3 naho ekipe ya Arsenal 
mu bwongereza ikaza guhura na PCV mu masaha ya tatu i Nairobi umugu wa Sociedad ukaza guhura na Inter de Milan mu masaha ya tatu naho Braga ikaza guhura na Napoli Benfica ikaza guhura na Salzburg mu masaha ya tatu Sevilla ikaza guhura na Lens naho Galatasaray yo mu Turkey ikaza guhura na Copenhagen guko rero uko byifashe mu mikino ya Champions League kuba kunzi bacu ba sport rero na hadi sore za makuru ya kyokuru umugoro wa rero reka tubishimire mwebwe mwese bakomeje kudutega matwi bishimiye mugenzi wa sikawanya ni muri studio Eric Kadoni namwe mwese bakomeje kudutega matwi turabashimiye cyane ahafi ya mukomeje mu bibi byiza barakumwe na zadi musenyeri na kadaruka stop rebellions and armed conflicts that have torn apart the DRC and the Great Lakes region nor have they succeeded in protecting the civilian populations therefore the phased responsible and sustainable withdrawal of MINUSCO which was announced in 2018 and whose transition plan was adopted in 2021 is that plan withdrawal and anachronism given the changes in the political security and current social contingencies it is thus illusory and counterproductive to continue to cling to maintaining MINUSCO to re-establish peace in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and to stabilize it. Furthermore, the accelerated withdrawal of MINUSCO is absolutely necessary to ease the tensions between MINUSCO and our citizens. It is the time to explore new avenues for strategic collaboration with the United Nations, mechanisms that are more in, lock, in lockstep with our current realities. This is why, in my capacity as guarantor of the, under the Constitution, guarantor of the territorial integrity, sovereignty, and independence of my country, <clears throat> and to ensure the good conduct of our nation and the well-being of my compatriots, in this capacity, I've instructed the government of the Republic to begin discussions with the UN authorities to ensure an accelerated withdrawal of MINUSCO from the Democratic Republic of the Congo moving up the deadline from December 2024 to December 2023. This is the meaning behind the step of our government, which addressed a letter to the President of the Security Council of the United Nations dated 1 September 2023, asking for the accelerated withdrawal of MINUSCO. In line with this accelerated withdrawal of MINUSCO, the DRC reiterates its demand to the Security Council of the United Nations to sanction all physical and legal persons acknowledged to be perpetrators, co-perpetrators and accomplices, both material and, and uh, intellectually, perpetrators of war crimes and crimes against humanity and serious violations of human rights, international law, and the Charter of the United Nations on Congolese territory. It is unjust and unacceptable for persons deemed to be responsible for the serious crimes mentioned in various reports of UN experts themselves on the security situation in the DRC. It is unacceptable for these persons to remain to, to continue to enjoy impunity with the complete silence of our organization and its member states, which have placed the combating impunity as among their main priorities when it comes to internal and external governance. In this regard, the government of the DRC warmly welcomes the sanctions recently imposed by the United States on Rwanda for its support for the M23 terrorist groups and against one of its senior officials involved in the criminal undertakings in Congo. To recall, this terrorist group, which is a proxy for Rwanda, has not honored any of the commitments entered into by the heads of states of the region in the context of the Luanda and Nairobi process. Indeed, not only have they not left the positions they they conquered, they are continuing to massacre the civilian population and they are refusing pre-cantonment and cantonment. They are demanding a dialogue that will never be granted to them. The Democratic Republic 
of the Congo. La République. The Democratic Republic of the Congo hopes that the other states will follow this good example set by the United States of America in order to support the common struggle against impunity to ensure the triumph of the ideals of justice and solidarity among peoples. Mm -hmm. The government of the DRC is awaiting the next meeting of the Security Council, which will focus in particular to uh, focus in particular on our request and we want it to be constructive when it comes to the management of the delicate and laborious process of crafting peace in our country. President, there's another challenge that is a concern of the utmost concern to all of the nations of the world. I am referring to the warming of our planet. Needless to say, there's been an increase in temperature for several decades that has affected the life of everyone everyone in humanity and is of concern to all of us. Having said that, I am compelled to note that despite the proclamations and good faith of polluters when it comes to stopping greenhouse gas emissions, despite the many fora convened all over the world to stem this scourge, including the 27 COPs, that is the conference of uh, member states of the UN to counter climate change, and despite the many resolutions and recommendations adopted at these various bodies, despite all this, the warming of our planet is far from being restricted to the 1.5 degrees Celsius target. Despite the COP27 held in Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt this year, there is concern about a trend toward this temperature rising this is not very reassuring, and it calls for us, doubtlessly, to revisit our approaches and our policies that we've adopted. In this context, the African Climate Summit, which will be held in Nairobi in Kenya, under the joint leadership of the African Union and the Republic of Kenya from the 4th to the 7th of September of this year, that summit was a welcome initiative and an opportune initiative which shows the determination of Africa to participate actively in addressing this vital question and now to act as a heavyweight when it comes to providing solutions to global warming and to ensuring future economies that are more green and more responsibility. The Africans emerged from the summit with a set of shared specifications contained in the Declaration of Nairobi, which aim to ensure a reform of the international financial architecture, to ensure more fairness, restructuring, debt alleviation, uh, local transformation of the products, and putting in place a carbon tax regime, including a tax on the commerce in uh, fossil fuels and uh, maritime and air transport. They also recalled, they also reminded the rich polluters of the commitments that they took on in 2009 but have yet to honor. That is to provide 100 billion US dollars in climate financing. The Democratic Republic of the Congo calls upon the United Nations and upon the entire international community to pay particular attention to the legitimate claims of Africa. In this context, my country calls for the creation of a fair carbon market, and we want to see an incentivizing of prices to bolster the efficacy of climate financing. We hope to see the rapid operationalization of Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, and we support the idea of mutually beneficial partnerships between the state and the private sector. In the same vein, the Democratic Republic of the Congo reiterates its full readiness to cooperate with all states.